Grandmother became entangled in the shop's shutters and was left hanging seven feet upside down. When a grandmother's coat became tangled in the security shutters of a store, she was left hanging upside down. Surveillance footage showed in Hughes, 71-year-old, being hoisted seven feet into the air in front of a convenience store in Rhonda Sinon TAF. She said that the occurrence could only happen to me and went by the nickname Super Ann in her Welsh hometown. Speaking at her home near the Best One shop in Tonteg, near Pontypridd, Ms. Hughes said her thought at the time was flipping heck. It's just lucky I've got a good sense of humor, she said. The video was posted by the store on social media, and it has received close to 2 million views. When the electric shutters were lifted and Ms. Hughes' coat became trapped, she was waiting for the store to open, where she works as a cleaner. Footage showed her dangling upside down before a shopkeeper rescued her by holding her in his arms as the shutter was slowly lowered. She said, I've been suffering falls for the past six months or so and the doctors at the hospital think it's from low blood pressure, it was going up then. I'm learning to live with the fame. I'll never hear the end of it. The shutter was completely open, then I screamed his, the shopkeeper's, name, and thank goodness he came out and lowered the shutter a little bit and managed to get me in his arms. And I just can remember saying to him, just grab my head, I was worried I was going to fall, I was pointing towards the floor. But while Ms. Hughes says she was shaken up by the incident, she was not injured. After years of delays, over 200 very old rape case trials might start by the end of July. By the end of July, around 200 very old rape cases could go to trial, a senior judge has declared. The senior presiding judge for England and Wales, Lord Justice Adis, is now reviewing 181 cases, some of which entail retrials and some of which feature children as the alleged victims. The cases have been at Crown Courts across England and Wales since 2021, a delay that is an unacceptable state of affairs from the point of view of the complainants, the witnesses, the defendants, and justice generally. The system suffered some shocks over the last four years because of the pandemic, we didn't used to have this problem, and the current situation is the product of those shocks, the judge said. There were 3,355 rape cases awaiting trial as of January, with about 6% of those classed as a very old, Lord Justice Adis said. The Court of Appeal judge, who oversees leading Crown Court judges, said, it's a small proportion of the total number of rape cases that we have to deal with that end up getting this old but, nevertheless, it's a significant injustice because the system has recovered its capacity. We are now in a position to make some choices. We are not in a hand-to-mouth crisis now. Labor's Shadow Justice Secretary Shabana Mahmood welcomed the a significant intervention, but added, it's ultimately the responsibility of government to ensure a functional criminal justice system and their abysmal failure has led to a record backlog of cases. It should not fall to judges to ensure that rape victims do not wait for years to have their cases heard. The announcement follows a poll conducted by the Criminal Bar Association, which revealed that over 60% of attorneys licensed to handle rape and severe sexual offense cases stated they would not reapply to the specialist list to practice. Commenting on this, Lord Justice Adis said, Our system requires a substantial supply of skilled and experienced advocates in all our offense categories, but nowhere more than in rape and other serious sexual offenses. If that supply is threatened, for whatever reason, our capacity to deal with the work is inhibited and that is a significant limiting factor. We hope that there will be work done, investment made in the long term, in order to sustain that necessary supply of skilled people working in the system. They are a very valuable asset and it's disappointing to read that survey, but I hope that that survey can be the start of efforts to put the situation right, because we can't run the system without advocates. Madonna couldn't walk after near-death experience in summer. Following her near-death experience last summer, during which she was hospitalized with a dangerous bacterial infection, Madonna confided in her followers that she couldn't walk. The 65-year-old pop singer had to delay the celebration tour's North American leg due to her emergency room visit in June of last year, which coincided with the 40th anniversary of her musical career. Madonna praised a very special man in the crowd, her doctor David Agus, and added that the sickness was a surprise before beginning the first of five concerts at the Kia Forum in Los Angeles. When I was sick this summer and I literally couldn't walk from my bed to the toilet. 
I would call him every other day and ask him why I didn't have any energy, when my energy was going to come back, when was I going to feel myself again, when could I go back on tour again. All he would say is, go outside in the sun, you need vitamin D, and your kidneys will keep working, she said. She described the ordeal as a pretty scary, and revealed the first word she said when she woke from her coma. I didn't know for four days because I was in an induced coma, but when I woke up, the first word I said was, no. And I'm pretty sure God was saying to me, you want to come with us? You want to come with me? You want to go this way? And I said, no, no, yes, she said, adding that's what her assistant told her. She described how it was so hard, it was to go from her house to the garden so she could enjoy the sun, recalling her challenging recuperation trip. I didn't know when I could get up again and when I could be myself again. It was a strange thing to finally not feel like I was in control. That was my lesson to let go, she added. The Queen of Pop also previously praised her six children for supporting her while she was ill. Concerning a rise in insurance rates for young drivers who solely use automatic vehicles. According to recent statistics, young drivers with automatic-only licenses would spend £760 more for auto insurance than those who can also operate a manual automobile. According to data from Compare the Market, drivers under 25 with automatic licenses now pay £2,803 on average, a concerning increase. That is a £916 rise over the previous year. The DVLA data indicates that 138,354 drivers passed their tests in an automatic automobile in 2022 to 2023, which raises concerns about the growing number of drivers taking automatic-only exams. 34,749 was that number in 2012 to 13. The increasing cost of car insurance is concerning for young drivers across the board, particularly those who have only learned to drive automatic cars. These drivers face paying over £900 more this year to insure their car, the comparison site's motor insurance expert Julie Daniels said. According to the numbers, insurance rates for drivers under 25 have increased by an average of £644 since January 2023, reaching £2,009. All of this means that young drivers now have to pay, on average, £3,043 for the entire cost of operating a vehicle, a 25% rise from £2,436 last year. A tip for young drivers would be to look around for cheaper car insurance first, either when their policy is up for renewal, or when taking out insurance for the first time. Adding an experienced named driver to a person's insurance can also help reduce prices, as long as the information is accurate. Finally, a telematic policy, also known as a black box, can help give a younger driver more affordable quotes, Ms. Daniels added. Woman accused of swapping places with twin sister after fatal crash. After killing two children by ramming into a horse-drawn carriage, a lady allegedly switched places with her identical sister, according to police reports. The prosecution claims that 35-year-old Samantha Jo Peterson rear-ended a carriage in Minnesota while operating a vehicle while under the influence of narcotics. On September 25 of last year, her twin, Sarah Beth Peterson, originally admitted to the responding authorities that she was to blame for the collision. The catastrophe claimed the lives of Wilma Miller, 7-year-old, and Irma Miller, 11-year-old. Their siblings, who are 13 and 9 years old, were hospitalized after suffering severe injuries. In a criminal complaint submitted to the state's district court, the authorities stated that upon their arrival at the site of the Stewartville collision, both sisters were there. The statement went on to say that a deputy had taped Sarah Peterson telling Samantha Peterson that there's no way they would ever know the difference between the two of us so they can't tell, after she had spoken to her in his car. Police also alleged Samantha Peterson called her place of work's human resource department after the incident, where she said, I messed up. I just killed two Amish people. They were kid. I just hit a buggy. I'm not sober. They also found various online searches on Samantha Peterson's phone including, what happens if you get in an accident with an Amish buggy and kill two people, and how to lock an iPhone cops have. Samantha Peterson is scheduled to appear in court on March 25. She faces 21 charges, including criminal vehicular homicide and fleeing the scene of the accident. 
She was previously found guilty in October 2015 of driving while intoxicated and in August 2018 of driving while under the influence of a controlled drug, according to the complaint. Sarah Peterson faces 16 charges total, including attempts to accept responsibility for a crime and aiding and abetting. Taylor Swift revealed to be related to 19th century U.S. poetry great. Since Taylor Swift is one of the best songwriters of her time, it is not surprising that she seems to have a natural gift for language. The celebrity, who is presently on a global tour and made history at the Grammy Awards last month, is linked to American poet Emily Dickinson of the 19th century, according to research conducted by genealogy firm Ancestry. The two ladies are sixth cousins, three times removed, as it has been established. With Swift's upcoming album titled The Tortured Poets Department, it seems pretty apartment of Swift and Dickinson both descend from a 17th-century English immigrant, Swift's ninth great-grandfather and Dickinson's sixth great-grandfather who was an early settler of Windsor, Connecticut. Taylor Swift's ancestors remained in Connecticut for six generations until her part of the family eventually settled in northwestern Pennsylvania, where they married into the Swift family line. Swift herself has previously referenced the 19th century poet while talking about the different types of lyrics she writes for her songs, Ancestry, shared with Today. In 2022, the star revealed something dorky that when writing lyrics she separates them in her head into songs written by different pens, quill, fountain pen, and glitter gel pen. If my lyrics sound like a letter written by Emily Dickinson's great-grandmother while sewing a lace curtain, that's me writing in the quill genre, she said in 2022, while receiving the Songwriter Artist of the Decade Award from the Nashville Songwriters Association International. The poem, One Sister Have I in Our House, written by Emily Dickinson, has the term Forevermore, which is also the title of Swift's ninth album, Evermore, which was published in 2020. At the time, Swift's admirers believed the poet had influenced him. The Tortured Poets Department, the star's 11th studio album, will be released on April 19, and features collaborations with Florence and The Machine and Post Malone. The big question now is, will there be more inspiration from her sixth cousin, three times removed? Well, fans only have to wait until next month, thankfully not forevermore, to find out.